Mr. Media is recorded live before a studio audience of penny pinchers who treat every dollar like a brother in the new new media capital of the world, St. Petersburg, Florida. Hey, did you know that you can listen to the latest Mr. Media on your phone with the Stitcher app? Stitcher is smart radio for your smartphone. Mr. Media is on demand and on the go with Stitcher. Download Stitcher for your phone today. Get the free download at Stitcher.com. That's S-T-I-T-C-H-E-R.com. Frankly, it would have been easy to pass on Tony Hartle's new book, Selling Sunshine, 75 Tips, Tools, and Tactics for Becoming a Wildly Successful Entrepreneur. I say that with all due respect, but the truth is that the accomplishments of small business entrepreneurs often get overlooked in a marketplace where bigger is always thought to be better. But I started reading Sunshine, and I was impressed that Hartle really had some serious lessons to impart and some powerful experiences to share. I was fascinated with how far he had come, growing up poor by any measure, yet never lacking ambition or drive. Hartle grew his company, Planet Tan, from three Dallas mega tanning salons to 17 locations in multiple states. He made a bunch of money and got out, and his story is an inspirational one for anyone with an entrepreneurial itch. Tony Hartle, welcome to Mr. Media. Great. Glad to be here. Glad to have you. Uh, so, Tony, uh, everything you needed to learn in life, you learned in a tanning salon? Well, I wouldn't say in a tanning salon. I, I certainly learned a lot in that business, much more than I learned getting my undergrad degree in business. But I learned much, much of the, uh, I guess, the values of the organization were imparted upon me from uh, my childhood and my mother, which really came from work ethic, honesty, and doing what you said you were going to do. And those type of values carried on. Uh, which might sound simple, but uh, they're, they're still just uh, just as important uh, today in business as they are in childhood. So um, those were the lessons that I think were the most valuable, helping me in my business. Now you had an <clears throat> excuse me, you had an interesting situation growing up, which probably explains why you're telling us that you learned these these values from your mother. Uh, she had to work awfully hard to support the family. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Like many other uh, children that grow up in a divorced household, my mother was a stay-at-home mom. My father was an aeronautical engineer, and when they divorced, she was thrust into the workspace, and uh, she had no prior experience, nor did she have uh, a background um, in any type of uh, education that would allow her to go into uh, a, a management job. So she, she took what she could, and from an early age on, I saw the way she worked and the way she, uh, she uh, really always dealt with everything with grace and, and uh, kept her word. And even though, um, you know, times were tough, we never knew it in, in our childhood. Although I did know that I wanted to create opportunities for my family when I was young to uh, sort of get us out of those situations and, uh, and improve our life, whether that was with a house or new cars and things like that. But I certainly, we never lacked for much as, as a child. And uh, we, were, we were certainly loved and, and had a great, uh, you know, a great example as a mother. Now, you... Uh... You made your uh, you made your money, if you will, uh, in the tanning industry. Something you were not necessarily that personally interested in. For you, it was all about the business, not necessarily the tanning, right? Yeah, I, I really wasn't even familiar with tanning salons until sophomore year in college. Uh, a girlfriend of mine suggested that we go and get a tan together. And to be quite honest, I was I was scared to get inside the machine because I was a little bit claustrophobic. So uh, in growing up, being dark German and always being outside, I never really thought that I needed much of a tan. So it wasn't a business that really I knew much about. No one in my family had tanned before. But um, as, I, uh, as I was uh, in business, I was a vice president of a large chain of health clubs. Before I started my company, I started seeing that the tanning industry was growing and expanding. And we saw a lot of similarities between fitness and tanning. And where the big opportunity for me to get in the tanning industry was, it was highly fragmented. There wasn't one uh, business or one chain that represented more than 1% of the locations in America. So we knew there was a huge opportunity there, and it was a mom-and-pop-dominated industry. So we knew that we could go in and, and bring much that we had learned in tanning, in fitness, I'm sorry, in fitness, and apply it to the tanning industry. Yeah. That's it, like memberships and hours of operations and pricing and marketing strategies, things like those. Yeah, that was one of the real interesting things about the book for someone who doesn't know anything about the tanning industry, uh, that it was so fragmented. I mean, I always think of it as being, oh, they must all be connected. But one of the big things that you did differently, I think of tanning salons that I've seen here in Florida, and they usually have two beds or three or four beds. 
you had 50 beds. You really had a very right. different uh, outlook on how to run this as a business. Right. And at the time when I started in the business, the average tanning salon in America, there were six tanning beds. The average revenue generated per tanning salon was around 175000 And so what we did is we said, okay, if, if, if this many beds equals this much revenue and we find the right density and population, what would happen if we created a differentiator, 50 beds, where people never had to wait for an appointment, open 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. so they could tan whenever they wanted, and that we set up enough computer terminals so they could get in and get out. And what happened over, over time was we were able to take – um, the six bed you know model that we're competing against and we put 50 beds in and we were able to do in excess of a million dollars per location and in many locations much much more but uh, we really kind of turned the industry on its head because we we came up with a membership model instead of paying ten dollars per tan we were charging nineteen dollars a month for unlimited tanning the only way that we could do that was to have enough tanning beds and have enough throughput and beds available and hours of operation that would sign up enough people to be be able to get them in and out. I think the, the model uh, that I thought of was the, the restaurant and that, you know, people mm -hmm. who open a restaurant, they think, okay, in 60 minutes or 75 minutes it takes to get somebody a table, get them seated, get them fed, get them cleaned up and get them out. Can I make a bit, can I make a living by put, pushing this many people through every day? You sort of took that same approach to Beds. Yeah, I mean that's a, that's a good analogy with uh, looking at throughput. I know many of the restaurant chains study the amount of time it takes for someone to sit down and 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 leave the facility. Our big thing we wanted we wanted people to stay, and uh, because we had 50 beds, we didn't have to worry about that. We just had to really analyze what type of beds were they going to, and make sure that our analytics that we put enough beds in that supported uh, that flow of customer. But the real key was. It's very similar to the uh, boutique hotel industry because we were preparing a room much like the hotel industry does, except we were preparing it for 20 minutes, a 20 minutes day, and we wanted to make sure that that 20 minutes felt felt as new and and as fresh as if it was the first time anybody had ever stayed in that room, much like a hotel room. Hmm. Does it matter that uh, you went to a business that you didn't necessarily have a? Uh, you didn't really have a thing for for tanning. Your thing was entrepreneur entrepreneurship. Uh, does that matter in this case or other people's cases? Well, I, you know, to be to be sincere, I, I didn't have one business that I said, "Oh, I am just in love with this industry." You know, I I want to go off and I want to I want to own chains of uh, hotels or restaurants or I want to create a a product that I'm going to go out there and sell. I just love the business. And uh, because the tanning industry felt so similar to the fitness industry, I felt that I had a, a good opportunity to go in and, and apply many of the things that I learned, some of the best practices, and apply it to the tanning industry. And also, I look for industries now, as I did then, that were highly fragmented, and the, the value proposition isn't good for the customer, where the price is high and the service uh, delivery is low. And there's lots of businesses out there where you go, boy, if someone did this right, they'd make a bundle. And that's how I saw tanning. And, and I really, what I love about business is I, I love building a team of people. I love the strategy. I love creating a brand. I love everything about running a business. And over time, certainly, I, I came to, to like the tanning industry. I loved Planet Tan. But I could never say that I was a tanning guy or a product or a service guy. But I loved my company. Well, uh, let's take a quick break. Uh, this is Bob Andelman, and you're listening to and hopefully watching the Mr. Media radio interview with Tony Hartle, founder of Planet Tan and author of Selling Sunshine, 75 Tips, Tools, and Tactics for Becoming a Wildly Successful Entrepreneur.